President Joe Biden supported Los Angeles City Council President Nuri Martinez's decision to resign from her post as president after leaked audio of her making racist comments during a private conversation were made public this week. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre made it clear Biden thinks others who are also guilty of doing the same should follow suit. Here's Jean-Pierre in Tuesday's press brief. The president is glad to see that one of the participants in that conversation has resigned, uh, but they all should. He believes that they all should resign. The language that was used and tolerated during that conversation was unacceptable, and it was appalling. Uh, they should all step down. Nuri is heard in the audio describing a fellow council member's young son who was black as a quote little monkey. Though she stepped down from the presidency, she is only taking a leave of absence from her role as a council member. So there were other people in this discussion, mm -hmm. including it looks like um, Kevin DeLeon, which was a name I remembered because I had written something criticizing some policy of his, like literally nine-ish years ago. Mm. Um, but I didn't remember that what that was, and it was a it was an affirmative consent bill that I thought was badly written. So okay, there we go. That's a, <laughs> so Robbie flashback said, having out. nothing to do with this. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, yeah, I don't know. It, we uh, you know we covered this the other day. It's yeah. uh, it was uh, really horrifically offensive, the conversation that was being had. Um, you know, look, I don't relish necessarily tripping people up in private conversations and trying to surveil people all the time and obviously canceling people over um, idiotic things they said a long time ago. Um, but I, I think political figure, I think it's fair to f hold political figures to the highest conceivable bar of personal behavior. They work for us. Um, it's not like I, I've despite being very concerned about cancel culture, I've always said it is not cancel culture when you say, hey, this representative said something crazy before. Like, they, they hold them to the highest level of scrutiny. This is not the same as, you know, this employee of Starbucks or whatever, whatever tweeted something vaguely mm -hmm. anti-Semitic when they were 16. Mm -hmm. I know I don't think they should lose their job. I don't think mm -hmm. they should care at all. Mm -hmm. Totally against that. Um, you know, for public figures, it, it sort of matter. Well, how bad was it? How long ago was it? What was it? Yeah. Well, you this know, we have was to consider all these things. This obviously. was contemporaneous. And again, these are political figures. These are this is elected yeah. office. Those I, people mm. toss them all out the, the, the slightest well, wrongdoing. I, I, I do think there's a public trust issue, and it's you know, it's difficult to imagine how she can do her job at this point, given all of the scrutiny that's on her and given, you know, the pushback she's likely to get in meetings, knowing that, you know, in, in some ways, the racist statement, like the statements about the council member's son are the most kind of headline grabbing. The implications about how she was viewing the negotiations over how to district the city as a battle between the interests of um, Latinos and black people in the district as a zero-sum game I, are what I almost find to be more concerning because that's what has a longer reach and an actual effect on the black and brown people who are living in the district. Her comments about uh, the white council member's son were about, I mean, they were callow and cruel, but they were about her feeling that a white person yeah. wasn't raising a black kid in the right way. Like, that's that's her baggage. But what's going to affect the people who are living in those districts are whether or not she feels like she needs to parcel up districts in a way that aggregate resources according to groups that she is basically advocating for and trying to privilege. And it's concerning because it does this kind of zero sum politics. I, I sound like a broken record, but it often ignores, ignores where the real wealth and power is, what kind of um, inequities you're supposed to be trying to disrupt, and not pitting groups who have very little against each other. And not questioning the idea that a district may or may not be able to pay for its schools or pave its roads or maintain its parks because it doesn't have um, you know, the stadium in its zoning or some mm -hmm. other profitable thing in its zoning, you know? And, and so, I, yeah, I do think that she should probably set aside, be step, uh, stepping aside. However, if she steps aside, nothing about those dynamics are going to change. Right, right. And that's, that's the worst part of all of this. If there were a way to, to 
exchange her stepping aside for some kind of honest conversation and commission that could evaluate why she feels like she's in a position to have to make these zero sum kinds of calculations, I would I would happily bargain for her to keep her we job. Could put it, we could put it on our commission docket, right? We're doing a democracy <laughs> commission. A democracy commission. We could do a racial healing. <laughs> but then I don't I don't want racial healing. I would love a space where she could be really honest about what has driven her to this place. Where she could be really honest about what has happened in the past that causes her to have these kinds of resentments. Because yeah. look, everybody is holding these kinds of things in. Every so many of us are forced. The way our politics she are designed. She went to DEFCON three. <laughs> she went to DEFCON three. Yeah, like they they. I think that people in a vacuum, given unlimited resources, I'm not saying there wouldn't be bigotry and bias, but it would be much more superficial and much less acute um, than it is today. And so rather than trying to make examples of people, especially since the underlying concerns are going to continue, I would much rather try to figure out a way to get to the bottom of what's driving that kind of animus. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, because people, well, people have uh, animus. They might have race-based animus or ethnicity-based animus or a more geographical-based animus or gender-based animus. The, and, and that's, you know, like everyone, that's so many people. Like obviously everyone who holds views or has said something or thinks something about someone that is not totally great, like if we just, if we unpersoned all of them, we would just have this huge mass of people who are what, not employable, not, it doesn't make any sense. But for public officials, yeah. we can find other public officials. Yeah, the and public officials surviving and, things yeah. that no other person would survive, yeah. that, that you know, a CEO would have to step down. Again, an employee might be fired, um, et cetera. But the political figure, because they don't just get fired, they had to be voted out of office, and they have such tremendous incumbency protections and all sorts of other things. They, they often just increasingly just weather the storm. They say, no, I'm not going to resign. Yeah. Um, so I, it's surprising even that she, that she resigned this much. They have to, these people have to be dragged out of office, yeah. kicking and screaming. It's, it's interesting that no one seems to have put a clear, a clear um, request to resign on the other people in the room that, yeah. you know, I, mean, I, I guess I have to look, I guess I would have to look a little bit more closely at exactly what their conduct was. Because yeah, look, I don't if someone says something, on, honestly, this could have happened to me. If someone, I could be in a private conversation with someone comes up to you, it starts saying some crazy thing. Sometimes and like, and you just, don't always, sometimes yeah. you, you, you do not denounce them because yeah. confrontation, is, I get enough of it on the show. <laughs> I don't like go through my day seeking more confrontation. So sometimes you just don't push back. You have to do a calculation about what the outcome here is going to be. Yeah. Have they pushed back in the past and realized they're not going to change the hearts and minds of this woman? Yeah. You know, like, so I'm not saying that I think that there should be, but I am surprised that they're, you know, in Karine Jean-Pierre's statement, you know, there's an allusion to the fact that other people should resign but not yeah. specifically these, these, I think, two other people who were in the room. So we'll see how that continues to develop. But, you know, a fascinating lesson for how we should and shouldn't do politics going forward and what kind of standards we should set our, for ourselves as, a, as an American community. You weren't here on uh, Monday, which was Columbus Day, mm -hmm. uh, which I, 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 forgot, I wanted to, but I forgot there's no, there was no reason to talk about it, I guess, based on what we were doing. My, my favorite clip from The Sopranos, the Columbus Day clip, where they're, where they're all sitting around getting mad about anti-Italian discrimination mm -hmm. because uh, some Native Americans are going to protest Columbus Day. Yeah. But Indigenous the best part say. of that is uh, Furio, who's the one character among them who is actually Italian from Italy. And he says, like, but I hate Columbus because Columbus was from Genoa, from northern Italy. <laughs> and they, they, they tr mistreat us. I hate the North. Like, even within, again, there's ethnic tensions even within what, what would all be described now as the same people. Mm. Mm. My, my only point being, ten tensions run deep in our confusion. No, 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 I get it. And um, happy belated Indigenous Peoples Day to you, <laughs> my Italian friends. <laughs> <laughs> all right, more rising after this. Stay with us.